Hey everyone, it's John and today what I want to do is do a video on Jinja2 templates to help you with your network automation. So what are Jinja2 templates? Well, basically it just is a template. So what is that? Um, well, not to insult anyone's intelligence, of course, but I thought, do you know what? Let's just make this easy to conceptualize and let's just bring up an obvious template. Now, I just pulled this out of the internet. This is not my name, John, but... <laughs> um, so look at this. Imagine Tesco... Think of the user base which they've got. Say they've maybe they've got, say, a good few million emails of people. Do you really want to be writing this exact same email out to every single user individually? No, the manpower is would be crazy. What you will do effectively here is write dear and then variable. This is going to change. This can be anything. The rest of it you type out, okay? And all you need to do is just substitute in your email user base at this part here in dear whatever it is. So it'd be dear John at whatever, and then you get this email, and then dear Sarah at this email, bloody blah, and it hits all them. And think how effective and efficient that is, rather than having to type it out the same. Now, you can probably notice a kind of parallel between network configurations. If you're configuring, say, BGP, and you're always typing router BGP something, the something changes, that's the variable, that's going to be the autonomous system number, that does change. But the fact is when you're configuring BGP, it's always root or BGP something, and then you'll always type a uh, network, and then the network might be different, but the word network's going to be the same. Okay, so these are the things which I'm going to try to template out. Now, the reason why this is so useful is that what if you have a set of host variables which you don't want to change? The root or IEP address you want to keep the same, the root or host name, whatever it is, but let's say you're using it on a different version of Cisco iOS. Let's say one router is Cisco iOS, the other one is Cisco iOS XR. It uses slightly different uh, syntax. What if the difference is even greater and maybe you've got some Cisco routers and some Juniper routers and maybe some Arista routers? Now, all of a sudden, maybe the syntax, even though all the host variables are the same, you want to keep the same IP addresses, but you need to type them into the router a different way. What you're going to do here is use these templates, which is going to reference which router is going to use which template, and you can keep the host variables the same, and they'll just be piped into that specific template. That is effectively what we're going to do in this video. So now, the way I've set this up, I'm cheating a little bit here, I'm going to confess. What I've got here are 10 routers. They're all Cisco routers, okay? But I'm actually going to do, let's pretend they're different vendors almost because what I'm going to do is configure EIGRP in all of them but the good thing I'm using for EIGRP is that EIGRP has got two very distinct and very different but compatible ways of typing it in. You've got EIGRP, your normal mode, your router EIGRP autonomous system number, so the router EIGRP 5 and you've also got named mode which is like router EIGRP John address family IPv4 unicast routing autonomous system number five, whatever, topology base, you've got all these different configurations. So you've got two completely different ways to type in um, EIGRP configurations, which would might be the case if you had two different uh, routers. One might configure OSPF one way, one might configure it another. Now I'm going to show you using Jinja2 templates, you can basically just type out the differences in the configuration once, and then just use that as a reference to pipe in your values depending on which router goes where. If it's a Juniper router, it goes into the Juniper template. If it's a Cisco router, it goes to the Cisco template. And the variables all stay the same. Okay, so it keeps things really nice, really easy, and very, very scalable. So that's effectively what you're going to do in this video. Now, what I will say is, as always, I am not a network automation expert. Far from. I'm a beginner and a novice. And if you see anything wrong with this, please correct me. The only reason I'm giving you these uh, videos is that I'm thinking maybe it might be helpful to someone. So, like I said, they're free and do with them as you please. I'm going to put the actual, um, all the files up in GitHub after, so you can just check the description if you want to use these files. So, with that said, I'm going to give a little bit of a warning in that this stuff can be a little bit confusing the first time you see it, because in this video particularly, there's going to be a lot of cross-referencing with variables, and you might find it hard to track. This is not an intelligence thing. If you just do it enough times, you'll start to follow it. I was the exact same. I think everyone who does this is, a, is the same at first. It's kind of hard to follow where's going where and how did that know to do that and how did it know to do this. Trust me, 
it's a repetition thing. Do it enough times and you start to see the pattern. So that's the fair warning, okay? So now I'm going to start the video and hopefully do my best job at trying to explain this because it is a bit confusing, I'm not going to lie, but stick with it and you'll see the value in it, okay? So let's have a look. What have we got here? So the first thing which I want to show you is, like I say, as per usual, if we do cat, Etsy, hosts, I've basically got my generic DNS configured effectively. So when I type in ping R1, we're going to look up R1 in this host file and it's going to resolve it to 192.168.55.1. These are all VRF'd off. So they've got different, um, so show run, they're not managing VRF. So for example, this interface in a separate VRF, so it's not going to be able to be touched by the the production network is going to be separate from the management network effectively. That's what we're doing here and these are these IP addresses so we can reach it out of band effectively. So when I type in ping R1, it's resolving it to this IP address and it can ping it, okay? So that's basically what's going on there. Now here's the part when it's going to get a little bit tricky but stick with it. Here's the playbook. I'm going to start with the playbook first, okay? So name first play automate routers, that's just a generic name. The host is going to be routers which is in our host file, we just cat that. This looks a little bit different here, I'll get to this later. We're using um, YAML format rather than INI. You can use INI but because we're going to have some inheritance going on, I think it's easier. YAML's a bit more of a kind of visual feel to it, you can see which which belong to which. It's more like a kind of folder structure on Windows, you can kind of see. It's, it's, it's just easier visually, so I'm using that. You can use the INI but you'll need to use um, the format a little bit different, you need to start saying, let's say, routers, a uh, hyphen children and whatnot to kind of show where the inheritance is. Don't worry about that too much. You can read that on the Ansible documentation. So like I say, we're going to use this on the, the routers. So we'll cat back into that. Cat, oh, play one. So we're going to execute in the routers. This is when it gets a little bit tricky, okay? So we're going to set a fact and we're going to set the fact of our EIGRP path. This is where we're going to tell the router, dependent on which type of router it is, what template to use, and it's going to be in the path of the templates folder, and we've got this variable here, EIGRP OS type, and then underscore EIGRP.j2. J2 is the Jinja2 template. So effectively, what we're doing is we're using these two special groups which Ansible has called group vars and host vars. The first one which we're referencing is group vars, okay? So if I do CD group vars, and I cat EIGRP named routers, okay? What's going to happen is for routers which are identified in the host file, like I say up here, is EIGRP named routers, which are these ones, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. They are going to have an OS type, an EIGRP OS type in their group variable, and that is going to be changed from EIGRP OS type to the word named. Now this might be confusing to understand, it's a lot of kind of bouncing around and back and forth and referencing that, that's what it's effectively doing. So now for EIGRP named routers, our EIGRP template path becomes templates named underscore EIGRP.j2. So if we go into templates and we cat named EIGRP.j2, this will be the path here because again, EIGRP OS type becomes named, so it becomes named underscore EIGRP.j2, which is this here. For those routers, they're going to use this template, which is that. Okay, I'll clear that, so it's a bit easier to see. They're going to use the EIGRP named mode, so we're going to have router EIGRP variable. This is going to be different. Address family IPv4 unicast autonomous system variable. Network variable. EIGRP router ID, variable, EIGRP stub, variable, topology base, no auto summary. Now, let's have a look at what those um, what those actually are. Okay, so let's have, if we go into CD host vars, and each one, I'll need to go back actually, CD host vars, where am I? There we go. Um, so we've got a bunch of all these routers that have got their each, each have their host variables, okay? So let's have a look at router 5, okay? So router 5. 
Okay, so Router 5's got some variables. Let's just see the others. So you can see they're all very similar. Okay, so they're just different, uh, different router IDs and whatnot, and they've all got the same AS and whatnot. So effectively, what's going to happen is, if we go back and look at um, this template here, Router EIGRP, and these curly braces denote a variable, okay? And it's basically saying, we're looking at the dictionary EIGRP, and dot virtual, okay, so see this dot? Effectively, that's how you reference it, okay? We're going to EIGRP dot virtual, which means EIGRP here. So that means we're going to reference this value here, IPv0. So effectively, what gets put in the template, Ansible now writes router EIGRP IPv0, okay? If we did eigrp.as, it's going to look at the eigrp.as, means we're going to use this one, which means the value is now 5. So Ansible will now write address family IPv4 unicast autonomous system number, or rather autonomous system 5. That gets substituted in. Network, eigrp.network, okay? eigrp.network here, so the value is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is basically advertise all networks. And this continues on eigrp stub, eigrp dot stub, eigrp dot stub is this value. So we're effectively we're going to type in eigrp stub connected. And it's basically just like that Tesco email. All this stuff is the stuff we're going to have for all these named routers, they're always going to have this typed in, they're always going to have this typed in, they're always going to have this type up, oh, this typed in, they're always going to have this typed in, and just the values are changing effectively, okay? So let's look at the other um, templates which we've got. We've got CD templates, that was the named one, and we've also got the normal one, so a cat, normal and it's going to, do you know what, we'll just clear that to make it a little bit clearer for you. That's just going to use the, the ordinary EIGRP which you might be more familiar with, just router EIGRP, autonomous system number, no auto, EIGRP router ID, network and I'm putting in, you don't need to put in stubs, I'm just putting in some additional configurations so you can see extra stuff. Obviously don't configure a stub network if it's not supposed to be a stub network. Um, and like I say, the same way that works is we do a cat play when the router is a normal EIGRP, we're going to go into Ansible will automatically look into group vars. It's going to see it's a EIGRP router, okay, which is this one here. So if we just do cat EIGRP router, the variable substitution here is EIGRP OS type, which is this part here, then becomes the word normal. So that means the EIGRP path is now in the templates folder and it's now called normal underscore eigrp.j2. So then Ansible will then look to templates and look at cat normal under eigrp, and it's, I'll clear that again, and it's going to reference that more basic one, the more usual one. So basically depending on whereabouts in the host, if it's an eigrp router, it's going to have cd, uh, CD group vars, it's going to have EIGRP variables, group variables, which are, means the OS type is normal, which means that this path becomes normal underscore EIGRP, which means the template it's going to use as the normal, why am I doing LS there? which means it uses this template, okay? Like I say, if we do cat hosts, if it's an EIGRP named router, i.e. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, it's going to Ansible look in the group variables for EIGRP named routers. The EIGRP OS type gets changed to the word named, so we go into the playbook, EIGRP OS type becomes named underscore EIGRP. So when we look into the templates and we do, we use this template instead because it's called named. So we cat named 
and we use the different template, okay, we use the named mode, okay, so that's effectively what's happening here. Now, like I say, I apologise if this is confusing to understand that, but it's it's a matter of practice, to be honest with you. So let's look at the last part of the playbook. Effectively, what we're doing is to get the actual configuration, we're going to use CLI config, and the config we're going to use is, again, this is a variable we're going to look up, and this lookup is a feature of Ansible, which is going to look up, and it can look up certain things. It can look up template, it can look up URL, it can look up file. In this case, we want to look up a template. Okay, so Ansible knows this, and we're going to look up template in the EIGRP path, which was the fact which we set, which is going to be the path here, which again is contingent on which type of router we have been we've been given in the host file, which will denote which template to use, which is going to tell you which kind of to, to what configuration to push out effectively. Again, notify the change, register, response, and we're just going to basically put out the response here. And that is basically how it's going to work. Okay? So without further ado, I think we should go and show the configuration. So like I say, none of these routers have got any configurations on them just yet. So we'll do a show, run, section, oh, EIGRP, nothing there. Four, these are all the same. Show, run, oh, section, EIGRP, nothing on them. So let's go and push out these configurations. Like I say, all the top ones, they've been grouped together, they're going to have the normal EIGRP, and the bottom one, we're going to pretend it's a different vendor completely, even though it's Cisco, but we're going to have completely different syntax. They're all going to use EIGRP named mode. Okay, so let's go and run this thing. Clear, oh, you can type John Boy. Ansible playbook play one, let's run it. So we're going to identify which template to use depending on what host is where. And we're doing that just now. And then the next thing it's going to do is actually apply those configurations based on that template and put in those variables. So like I say, the variables don't ever need to change. You can just keep them the same. And if you swap out half your production network with now these new Juniper routers, just keep the variables the same, just change the template and push it all out to Juniper. Do you know what I mean? It's really, really simple. It keeps things very, very scalable and it's just much better. It's much more manageable effectively. So that's that. All changed. We can see that here as denoted. Let's go into the router. So let's have a look at this one again. Like I say, this one should have um, just a normal EIGRP, which is the more common way to see it. There we go. Router EIGRP, show IP, EIGRP, neighbours, we've got our neighbours up. But, like I say, if we go to one of the bottom ones, uh, show, run, section EIGRP, it's using a different, it's using named mode, it's got address family, it's got topology base, but it's all the same, and this is continued right throughout the network. Because, like I say, we've referenced in different templates to use. Show run section EIGRP, this is going to have a normal one, but like I say down here the bottom one, this is going to have the name configuration. There we go. Okay. So like I say, that shows you how to template out your configurations. And again, to look at the host files, CD host vars, they're all pretty much the same. Uh, cat1. Just slight differences, but I mean, we're just pushing them out onto different configurations. So it doesn't really matter. These can all stay the same. You're just referencing different variables and you get a completely different effect depending on which template you use. So it makes things really, really simple and really, really manageable. Okay, doc. So that's the end of the video. Again, I apologize if this is a bit confusing. Just practice it, do it a few times, and I promise you, you will absolutely get it. So I'm going to put these up on... Um, GitHub, like I said, and that's the end of the video. So thanks very much, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.